Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be about the Darth Vader helmet. I know a few videos ago I said that this was completed and all, but I still needed to add the tusk to the helmet and paint the tusk and paint the nose part with the gray. So I went ahead and did that, completed that, and got that done. And while I was putting it together, I thought it'd be probably better if I just go ahead and add everything up to this point. So that's what I did. All the videos that I've had on the Darth Vader helmet is going to be in this video. Uh, from the 3D printing all the way up to the finish. Please stay to the end of the video. I'm going to have a giveaway and I'll be giving you the information how to how to get one of these collapsible 3D printed lightsabers. You can do Vader or Luke's. So be sure to stay to the end. I'll tell you how you can get one of these. There's a couple issues that I have that I'm going to have to fix and it's going to take a little bit of work. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, when it printed, I had to print the dome in two separate places. Here there's an overhang and here it's, it's fine. So I'm going to have to build up a, a side, the side here and do a lot of sanding to get it to be the right, the right, uh, the right thickness. So that's what we're going to do next. So it's time to get to work here. Uh, I'm going to try something new. This, uh, it's called Plastic Wood by DAP. I'm going to try this to do some filling. Sometimes I'll use different wood fillers and they look, work pretty decent. But my always my, my go-to stuff is this going to be this Bondo Glazing Spot Putty. This stuff works great. It's uh, easy to work with. The only problem is it has bad fumes. So you want to make sure when you, if you use this or anything that has a lot of chemicals in it to make sure you do it in a well ventilated area. But uh, this thing works really good and it sands decent. Hang on just a second. I'll show you one of my props that I... That I actually used it with. One of the props I used it with last was this Batman cowl, and it, it worked really well. And the texturing on that. I'll do another video on this helmet. I've had it for a little while. It's got magnetic back, so it slides on easier. This is actually the Batman cowl from Batman vs Superman. Um, it's pretty. It turned out really good. The, the texture is very really awesome on it. But uh, anyways, we'll cover. Like I said, we'll cover that in another video. If you would like to see that, I'll be leaving a link in the description for that. And so here I have Vader's faceplate. It's already been prepped and sanded, ready to go. So I'm gonna here I'm gonna be coating it with Krylon Color Max primer. It's a gray primer to get it started off. I'm gonna try to keep everything smooth.
Just get a nice even coat throughout you know, the whole entire mask surface. Okay, here is the actual, here's the helmet part, and you can tell the spot glazing putty that I've used. It's built up some areas that were, that were needing to be built up. It took a lot of, I don't have it here on the video, but it took a lot of sanding and applying that, and a sanding and applying that. I even used some wood filler here and there, and uh, just took some time to make sure I get it, you know, as, as even as possible as far as the two parts wherever the as far as wherever the parts join I want to you know try to make it sure it's a smooth transition so here we're just gonna do the same thing like we did to the face mask put an even coat throughout the whole entire helmet make sure we cover every part As you can see, sorry for the fast camera movement, as you can see towards right the the right side right here at the ridge, it's kind of a bump. I have to fill that in later on and I do that off screen. Use some more of, of the use some more of the glaze spot putty stuff from Bondo. Okay, here we're gonna put on a gloss. Um, I tried doing this here first to see how it came out, and I didn't like the way it came out. I uh, put the gloss down just for the faceplate to see how it turned out. It uh, it didn't work as well as I thought. So what I ended up doing later on was just applying some other coats. I'm using Rust-Oleum Glossy Black here, just to uh, kind of go through the whole helmet or the faceplate to see how it's gonna turn out. And here later on in the video, you'll see that I wasn't happy with the results. So I tried a different type of paint. Later, t later part of this video, you'll be able to see I used the same spray paint that I did for the helmet for the faceplate. I'm not too concerned with getting on the inside of the faceplate because it's just going to be a display piece. I'm not going to have it where you can actually go and, and put it on. Very important. I didn't show this earlier, but you you want to use a mask so that way you're not sanding and breathing this stuff. Even when you're spray painting, you want to make sure that you use stuff to protect yourself. This here is where I added extra the glazing spot putty stuff from Bondo. I added back to the helmet to build up some of the places that needed to be built up. Sand, sand, an eternity of sanding and reapplying, sanding and reapplying of this stuff. It's a process that took forever. Uh, this is back, I think, around in June of this year, 2019. And this video right now is coming out a week before Christmas. So I just finished it last week. That's how busy I've been with other things. So here, just kind of sanding, get things smooth. Use different. I'm using different sanding, sandpaper and uh, sanding blocks, just different things to see, you know, which one works the best. Just 
sand just sand you gotta be patient with this stuff you can't hurry it hurry it up by no means and I noticed too I don't know if it's the PLA or the primer or both but I started having like this uh, situation where there would be cracks appearing um, in there and I'm using the correct paint I mean for for plastic and this sort of thing that I've used in the past okay here we go I've uh, Actually, this right here, I'm getting closer. I've applied a black primer to the helmet, and I'm getting closer as far as smoothing the helmet down with adding the glazed putty. And the process is getting a lot closer to where it needs to be. Sand away. What took, that's what takes so long because you have to sand and then reapply this stuff and let it dry for a few hours. Sand again, and then the process just takes forever. It's getting smoother though. Some of the parts I had to build up some of the ridges for it to come out right here, right here at the front. You can see the extra spot putty there. I had to add up, add some to build up the bridge because fixing the sides where it didn't look quite right almost made it flush. So I had to raise that a little bit, which I did off camera. Now I'm just sanding it down, trying to get it close to where it needs to be. You just gotta feel around, make sure everything's smooth. Back to the primer, the same primer I applied prior to this, this other video. The primer is flat black, and I'm just gonna reapply this over the whole entire area that I just did, that I just sanded. Smooth, even coats. over through the top here rattle cans I think my next project I'm going to use it an airbrush to see how that works I haven't tried that yet I've just used basically rattle cans or acrylic paint for the most of the models thus far This particular day was very warm, so things were driving very quick. I'll probably in another coat of primer on it. see some divots and, and stuff inside the helmet there I think next time I'm just gonna do the settings a little different and simplify 3d make the model a little easier to print maybe cut it at a different angle because that helmet top if you remember the bowl part was in two pieces that's the reason why I had to build up the one side I think if I recut it a little differently it may make may have made things a lot easier if I would have 
separated the parts a little differently. But that's an afterthought. Just applying a thick coat. All right, here we go. This is more primer. Now, see, this is the paint from earlier, the Rust Oleum paint, and I'm just throwing this primer back over top of it and uh, what I'm doing is just adding more I'm not sanding anything off I'm just adding more I'm just adding the primer to the fader faceplate getting it ready for the final coats of uh, black glossy paint All right, that, I already put the first coat on. Sorry, I had to miss that. My camera wasn't working for the first round. For some odd reason, the battery decided to die on me. I thought it was charged, and it wasn't. So I apologize. So this is the second coat of Krylon Color Max Black Gloss. Make sure I get everything. Shake, rattle, and roll. That's all it is with those cans. I'm going to try airbrush next time. I think it'll be a little easier. I think an airbrush would actually be beneficial to use in this situation because you can, you can kind of control how much paint is being applied to the object that you're painting. So next video I'll be using the airbrush paint my models. I'm still undecided whether I'm going to, because the the faceplate actually has a back part too that, that you can print and make it a little more sturdy or put it together. I'm still debating whether to do it or just leave the faceplate in the helmet. But I think at this point, I'm just going to leave it as is. I may look at it again after the first of the year. Now I'll hit the face plate one last time here.
Okay, this is how you get to have a chance to win one of these lightsabers. This video needs to reach 5,000 views. I need you to like and subscribe, and down in the comments, I want, need you to put down which lightsaber you would like to have, either Vader's or Luke's. I will be choosing from those comments below. I'll reach out to you and let you know that you have won. Thank you so much for checking out this video. We'll be coming to you with another video next week. See you then.